With the NHL trade deadline getting closer and closer, we have two pretty solid trades to announce involving Vitaly Kratsov, William Lockwood, the Canucks, the Rangers, as well as Nino Niederreiter going to the Winnipeg Jets. But we're going to be breaking it all down right here, so hit that subscribe button for more trade content and watch till the end for all of the news. But let's first talk about the Vitaly Kratsov situation here because there's so many dimensions and layers to this whole deal, not even on the deal itself, but outside of it, because this was a trade that was necessary in order to get the patch Patrick Kane deal moving to New York. There was a couple things that already happened. Jake LeShizian putting on waivers and now the Vitaly Kratsov trade opens up the cap space for New York to potentially bring in Kane, which is the worst kept secret in the entire NHL right now. But the Vitaly Kratsov trade was a necessary evil. And of course, Kratsov does end up going to the Vancouver Canucks. The Vancouver Canucks Twitter announced this trade and there was a couple other big things as well. To the Vancouver Canucks goes Vitaly Kratsov and to the Rangers will go forward William Lockwood, who's been playing most in Abbots for this year and a seventh round pick in the 2026 NHL draft. Now let's talk about both these players here, Vitaly Kratsov specifically, who goes from a ninth overall pick back in 2018 to pretty much a cap dump in a Patrick Kane deal. Now we heard a lot about how Chris Drury was being patient with Kratsov, didn't want to give up on him too early, but this was again a necessary evil for the Rangers to get rid of some cap. And with Kratsov, I mean, they do get at least a couple of assets back, even if it's not super high value, which we'll get into a second. But at age 23, six foot three, 194 pounds, Kratsov has really been an interesting development trajectory ever since he was drafted, really. After 2019, he played pretty great minutes in the KHL, got 21 points in 50 games and look solid at the World Juniors. And at that point, it was looked at like his development was progressing pretty well. Then in 2020, he played a lot of games in the AHL, went from the KHL to VHL. And that's where kind of the concern started to arise from him, just the inconsistencies in his game. Then in 2021, he went back to the KHL, was pretty decent there, got 16 goals in 49 games. Then went up to the Rangers squad, though, and didn't really do all too much. And that last year in 2022, continued to play in the KHL. It was pretty solid there in limited minutes, especially in the playoffs. But this year, though, he has gone back to the Rangers squad. And you can see in 28 games, has three goals, three assists, six points in pretty limited minutes. But although he wasn't given much of an opportunity, he wasn't exactly excellent in the minutes he was given either. Maybe better defensively than what we've seen before, but nothing much that really moved the needle. And I think for the Rangers, that was really the biggest thing. Yes, he's 23, but he's going to be 20 turning 24 this year and he's in a position where you really want to see that big jump where he started to dominate some shifts started to look noticeable but that just never really came this year and although yes he didn't get the most minutes there was a game a few games back where he was on that top six was given an opportunity and didn't really do much with it which I think was kind of the nail in the coffin in his time as a ranger at least having that opportunity in the future because that obviously did not end up coming but now in vancouver in a situation well although the vancouver connects have a lot of solid wingers i think if they do give kratz up a a good look consistently in a skill position possibly on a power play I could see Kratsov maybe possibly turn in the corner, but I also don't see him being much more than maybe a third line finisher at the most. But let's also take a look at what the Rangers got back in the trade. They got Will Lockwood, who was a 64th overall pick back in the 2016 draft by the Canucks. And another thing that was interesting is that this really solidifies the 2016 draft for the Canucks because now with Lockwood gone, I don't think there's anybody else in their organization still with them from that draft, which is crazy to think about. But with Lockwood, he's 24 years old, turning 25 in June, 5'11", 185 pounds. Been playing mostly in the AHL for the Canucks. Has played some NHL games here and there. Hasn't been all too crazy, getting one point in 13 games. But in the AHL, is 18 points in 26 games. It's 12 goals. And he could be maybe something, maybe if they want a cheap option on that fourth line next year, perhaps. But I wouldn't expect much of a guy there coming back. And then, of course, you think about the fact that the other pick they got, the other asset they got back in this trade is not just a seventh round pick, but a seventh round pick in 2026. The player the Rangers will draft with that pick is probably 15 years old right now. And yeah, probably not going to be all too impactful either. So the fact that the Rangers went from a ninth overall pick to maybe a four flying guy and a seventh round pick years down the line. Not ideal asset management, not going to lie. But I think Kratsov is also a little bit of a cautionary tale of a player that, yes, had some skill, but also had problems processing the game and using that skill outside of isolated moments 
as well as just not really having NHL pace. And ninth overall, it was looked at as a little bit of a reach at the time back in 2018, and it obviously was. Even though that 2018 draft is just not looking good whatsoever, the Kratzov pick was still, let's be honest, a bust. And when it comes to who wins this trade, I mean, for the Rangers, it's a cap dump to get Patrick Kane, so in that way, I guess it's a win for them. But for the Canucks, if they can get a third-line guy out of Kratzov, then, I mean, giving up an AHL player and a seventh-round pick in 2026, it's not the worst thing in the world. So I could see, in a way, both teams winning this deal. But then let's go to the second trade we're going to talk about here, and one that, to me, is really underrated and really interesting in the Nino Niederreiter deal. Now, I didn't even, uh, <laughs> I didn't even purposely have the shameless Twitter plug there, but if you want to go follow me there, obviously. Uh, pretty good content, no bias, no bias at all. But we have the Nino Niederreiter trade, which to me was kind of an under-the-radar option at this deadline, making $4 million for this year and next. But Nino Niederreiter officially goes from the Preds to the Winnipeg Jets, and as a Dallas Stars fan, yeah, I mean, I already wasn't too confident with the team recently, but Nino Niederreiter was a guy I really wanted in the target, and the Jets getting him is really bad salt in the wound. But then you also have the trade price here, and this is crazy. A 2024 second round pick for a player that, to me, as a middle six option, I mean, this is pretty realistic. And also considering the fact that Winnipeg's in a pretty unique position here. Again, they've been fantastic this season. I think Niederreiter is almost exactly what they need. Sure, a team of Meyer would be nice or some other excellent forward, but Niederreiter as a five on five play generator and a guy that has some great finishing touch, there's very worse options that you could go for out there. And he's not atrocious defensively. He can still be okay when he needs to, even if he's not going to impress you in his own end. But I think as a score, as maybe a second power play guy, he's going to fit right in on Winnipeg. And I think it's a pretty great fit. And for the National Predators, getting a second round pick for him, I don't think is bad value, especially considering it's a pick next year, which for Winnipeg, with how manic they are season to season, maybe it could be pretty decent. But when we look at Nito at 30 years old, at six foot two, 218 pounds, he's gonna be a really interesting player in that middle six for the Jets. You can see this here in Nashville, at making it $4 million per. He has 18 goals, 10 assists, 28 points. And to me, I think inconsistencies have maybe been the biggest thing surrounding him, but also Nashville has been a pretty inconsistently weird team this year too, so I don't really blame him for that. He likes to go on these kind of goal-scoring spurts, and he's kind of gone on one this last week. But I think for the Jets, again, as a third-line guy, I, I think he's going to be excellent as just good offensive depth for the playoffs. Scored four goals in 14 games for the Canes last year in 2022, but he's going to be an interesting fit. And for a second-round pick for the Jets, I mean, that's the type of move I think they needed to make and they do bolster the forward lineup which I think is going to pay dividends and it's not this blockbuster trade but again for in Winnipeg system 18 goals in 50 through six games I think he's going to fit in pretty well there and again a second round pick it's not amazing for him but I think that's around the value we're going to give up anyway especially with how few solid solidified forward options there are in this market that can especially score as well as Niederreiter can in isolated moments. To me, with the Jets, he's going to be perfectly fine, perfectly solid on that third line. And as another guy I wanted the Stars to go after, that is just not going to happen. But overall, a couple of really solid trades. One that really sets up a big one that we'll see soon. And one that I think for the Jets is a perfectly acceptable trade and one that we knew they were probably going to make. Not a blockbuster deal, but Niederreiter, I think, will move the needle kind of like Stasty did a couple years back for them. But just a solid player adding on to that middle six, and it's pretty much exactly what they need, in my opinion. But even though I think the Jets did pretty well, hey, for the Preds to sign a free agent and get a second round pick for him in the trade deadline, I think that's a pretty solid win for them, too. But let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think of these trades, the Kratzov and the Niederreiter trade, and which teams do you think wins these deals? The Canucks, the Rangers, the Preds, the Jets? Let us know down below. Let me know what you think of all these deals. Of course, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more news videos just like this. And share the video of all the hockey fans you guys know online. Get the news out there to them. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great one. And goodbye.